All right, hey everyone, we're back with another FST uh, in Montreal on 12.5.1 still. I haven't had the new update. The 12.5.2 is out with uh, actual Smart Summon. But I don't think anyone in Montreal or Canada has it yet. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Uh, I'm going somewhere that I've never been. So it's going to be a new destination for myself. And I thought, uh, I don't know the roads. Let's see how FST is going to handle it without knowing. So, okay, so interesting. That was actually a very good decision. I probably would have went because I had the time. But it let the car take the right turn first, which was a good decision there. So um, what's new? Uh, like I was saying, new software's out in the states with the actual smart summon for the vision teslas and uh, i've been watching the videos obviously it's it's nice that we're having smart summon okay this guy is not doing a stop at all <coughs> uh and yeah guys i have my sunglasses right now because it's sunny so i'm gonna be touching the wheel uh but definitely we if i take off the glasses we don't need to so yeah, Smart Summon. Uh, my thoughts initially when I'm watching the videos is that uh, it's not what I was expecting on the first release. Elon was hyping it up, saying that it would be uh, much better than the older Summon that uh, Raider Tesla's had. And uh, it does look a bit faster perhaps, but it still does mistakes. It's not as good. It's still a bit too slow in my opinion. Is it going to be useful for situations where it's pouring rain or, um, I don't know, situations where you, you wouldn't want to go out, perhaps? Okay, good decision here. So traffic for the left turn, but we don't need to take that. Taking the right over here. We have a school bus in front of us. Sadly, we're, we're not going to be interacting with it. So green light. This is fine. Yeah, so I'm not sure how uh, how I feel about the actual smart summon that's being released in the States right now. This guy or girl unbothered. And uh, we're gonna be taking a left turn. It's going to turn yellow and it's going to stop. But we'll see how uh, self-driving does, not self-driving, the actual smart summon. Uh, hopefully it does get better. Um, besides that, again, um, I don't know, I haven't been uploading and I have a few backlogs of videos that I'm considering uploading, but who knows what I'm going to post. Um, if you guys are looking into buying a Tesla, there's referral codes now that are back. I'm gonna be posting mine in the comments or in the description. Uh, so if you're looking to get a Tesla and you want a thousand dollar discount, feel free to use my referral code and it's gonna help me obviously uh, by giving me credits as well. Uh, and I would uh, definitely appreciate that. So if you're looking into getting a Tesla, check into the comments below. I should not be going in this situation, <clears throat> but I mean, it was safe, right? <laughs> this is, FST is making me consider signals, uh, the traffic signals that we have. So, sure, straight only green lights, but if there's no cars coming, why should I, should I be uh, waiting for the, the light to turn green, right? So, that's a question that I've been asking myself. Um, same thing about straight only if you want to turn right and you can't. I'm uh, pretty sure that's only a Montreal thing. But yeah, there's, there's, there's straight only green lights. And you can't turn right because it's letting pedestrians pass. But there's no one passing. There's no, no human being around. So I have to wait multiple seconds, cause traffic, because maybe the person behind me wants to just go straight. And they're going to be stuck behind me because it's a straight only green light. So it definitely makes you wonder if the 
traffic signals are appropriate if they make any sense because again obviously if so what's the point straight only and right right turn with pedestrians walking that makes no sense right I don't know if you guys could see that signal there that absolutely doesn't make any sense oh yeah so what it needs to do here is um, we're gonna be having to change lane because we have to go onto the highway there's police we're slowing down to change lane is it gonna do it it should and it needs to do it again if it doesn't I'm gonna intervene okay good so two good lane changes I'm happy with that and this is one of the most crowded highways of uh, Montreal we have a new shopping center that opened called the Royal Mount and that's probably going to be disastrous for our traffic on this highway because it's already very bad and it's right at the uh, intersection of this highway it's a mixed feeling right it's it's supposed to be this it's the second biggest mall in Canada that just opened up uh, with a lot of brands uh, Louis Vuitton and all that stuff but it's in the middle of the traffic zone which is going to be chaotic so we'll see how that's going to perform anyways this is not about Montreal this video is about FSD so we're on the highway it's it read a 50 kilometer per hour max limit but it's probably going to change with this 70 over here and that's one thing that they still have to work on is uh, the, the the speed limits Okay, lane change over here. The car behind me was not letting me. And now he's letting me, so I'm just gonna go. So that was me intervening. I put my flickers on because he flashed me, right? So I don't want to annoy the guy. He was going a bit too fast, so he thought he couldn't make it. Um, and the only reason I intervened is because I don't want him to be annoyed. He didn't need to. The guy could have passed. But that's something that the car doesn't know, right? It, it can't be... The flashes he flashed me high beat me to uh, take over but the car doesn't know so the car would would guess that he would just accelerate again and we would take the lane which wasn't the case <clears throat> and I don't think there's any uh, maybe there's a way to fix it maybe in the future you know FSC is gonna be uh, aware of all these uh, human behaviors that we have so signaling with our hands or uh, high beaming and stuff like that but honestly I think the way that I see it happening is once people know that Tesla's are gonna be self-driving and there's no drivers in the car their behavior is gonna change towards that car so let's say for example if the guy knew that my say we're five years in the future Teslas are driving themselves and there's no driver in the car right so people would know that when they see a Tesla there's a chance that it's going to be a self-driving car and they're going to be behaving differently around a self-driving car than they would around the human being so obviously they're not going to be signaling they're not going to be high beaming I'm just going to increase the speed a bit over here <clears throat> and that's just by knowing that it's going to be a self-driving car it's going to solve the problem of how to interact with human behaviors because you're not it's going to eliminate the human uh, interactions and behaviors I don't know if I'm clear with that uh, thought train but uh, that's why I think it's going to be solved it's we're, we're not gonna it makes more sense for people to change their behavior around a self-driving car than for the car to learn human behaviors because then in 30 years there's going to be no one almost driving and driving is going to be a luxury if you want to have a luxury car you want to have your drive then uh, you're, you're probably going to be able to and maybe permits are going to be pr probably much more expensive like owning a horse right and i think uh, people make the comparison 
there. It slowed down again. Wow, interesting. Okay, I thought it didn't want to let me speed up. So it's going to be like owning a horse right now. It's super expensive, but back then it was the norm. Uh, but now it just makes more sense to have a car, the cheaper cars than horses. Man, I, I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad at, at keeping the same train of thought and just going all over the place. Uh, so all that to say that, again, I don't think self-driving is going to change. It's going to be reading people's signals or the car's signals and it's more likely going to be focusing on see here it should not be why is it slowing down it should accelerate i don't know what it's doing my god it's acting up okay that was interesting no I'm pressing the, the pedal here because it was behaving. <laughs> that was not good. It does that, right? The highway stack is really not optimal yet. And that's why I kind of was hoping that it, it wouldn't be a highway drive because it acts up like that on the highway. It does stupid stuff. was an interesting uh, interaction though because I was the car was slowing down to change lane which I don't know why it does that on the highway but that's not true though it does accelerate sometimes as well but it was slowing down and the car behind me was slowing down to turn so there was a confusion going on over there you can check back the video I think that's what happened just by looking at the uh, visualization Getting off the highway. I'm going to have a five minute drive here. So, situations like this where skeptics or haters are going to be saying that it's a dangerous software, right? Or that it's not ready, it's never going to be ready. Um, how can I say this? It's much easier to criticize a uh, a computer than it is to crit criticize humans and that is okay it's normal you want when it's a software and there's no one to blame there's no one person to blame it's you want to have the software at its maximum potential to reduce into in, to reduce accidents interventions and problems so I'm gonna take off my glasses here it's it's normal to be uh, criticizing and wanting the product to be almost perfect uh, for it to be wide release. But again, someone is behind the wheel uh, with the software right now. It's, it's, no one is saying that it's ready to drive itself. It obviously is not. It makes mistakes that should not be happening and have, they have to be fixed before releasing it to the wide public. I'm gonna to have to intervene here, I know, because they, they mess up the patch in Montreal. And the car sometimes tries to turn right on a on a red 
Like, it's not supposed to. So they they messed up the patch. But interesting, it's not doing it. I don't know if it's fixed again, but. Anyways, all that to say that the software is obviously not ready to be a self-driving car. We're not saying it's a self-driving car, but take a step back, understand that mistakes happen, that it's not ready, and the driver is responsible. So I'm responsible right now. If anything happens, it's on me. I'm not gonna blame the car. I'm driving the car. It's just helping me. It's like it's like a cruise control that is much, much more advanced, obviously, okay? So anything that happens is your your fault, the driver's fault. But look at everything that is happening that is almost perfect, okay? Look at that. So the car is coming in, pedestrians are going in, the car is turning, and I have my way of turning too, right? Although it's a bit too slow maybe, but it was being cautioned, uh, cautious, okay? And now cars are coming in, it's reacting to the cars in front of me, it's reacting to these two cars. Now it's gonna decide that it's, it wants to go behind this and it's making an Im imaginary line, which people would do. Okay, when the, the road is too big. So it has all this intelligence. Look at the guy the guy behind me. There's no lines in the middle, but there, somehow humans decide that there's another line in the middle. And that's what the car is doing as well. It sees the car, it sees the people. So, and it sees the car coming in. We're slowing down for that. It has a lot of intelligence, and this is crazy. If you go back two years, you would never have, you would never believe that something with this would happen, right? Waymo is doing it alone without any drivers, and that is crazy, right? But it's a very restricted area that is, you can say, pre-mapped, and it's fine. If it works, if, if Tesla has to pre-map everything, then that's okay too, but that's just, so much more costly and inefficient in the long term because what are you going to do when there's going to be random constructions roads blocked at night it's going to cause confusion so you want to have a vision only system that works any day but so yellow light we're slowing down it's reacting to the yellow it's stopping for the reds is it one time gonna be on decisive for yellow Yes, it's gonna happen. Is it gonna miss the speed bumps? Yes, it's gonna happen. Is it gonna get fixed in the future? Yes, it's gonna happen. Um, just uh, a few patches ago, the car was having so much trouble to turn right on unprotected rights and lefts. They were super, super long, super hesitant. It would be embarrassing to be sitting in the car, but now it does it alone right so things are gonna get fixed but if you're having a hard time to understand the technology just take a step back and say the car is actually reacting to 95 maybe 95 to 99 percent of the situation how many times did I intervene today um, I intervened twice, but never with brakes. I just signaled once to change lane because the car behind me wanted to change lane. So look here, <clears throat> maybe it was a bit too close, but the car <laughs> knew what to do, right? I was ready to brake. If there was an accident, it would be my fault or it could be someone else's fault, right? It's not always your fault. If the guy is changing lane and not paying attention to me has an accident, it could be his fault. Uh, and yeah so all that to say the software's crazy look at that so we're trying to change lane unprotected we can't see anything there's a bicycle coming as well but we have all the time needed to do this and now it's stopping for this bike which it i'm pressing the pedal here because it shouldn't but it's being it's being uh, careful because what's worse getting into an accident yep definitely you don't want an accident. It's not bad to be waiting. Anyways, so I'm at my destination. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that's it. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.